we understand when we play our best, we have a chance against anybody. It's going to definitely be a, a challenge for us, but this team's never backed down from challenges. We know that our best is good enough. It always has been. But we also know that we do need to play our best. He's got it! They will not catch him, Sprecher! There he goes! To the five! Touchdown, Texas! We really don't have anything to prove to anybody but ourselves. I don't remember the last time we've had 10 wins. It would be huge. And they would show that um, we, we've got our we got our program headed in the right direction. We're very excited. This is a goal that we've had since we set out in January was to play in a big bowl game. Man, if this isn't vintage Sam Ellinger, I don't know what is. Off the buses, into the stadium, here comes the Texas quarterback wearing what else? Drew Brees, Westlake number 15 jersey. What a tribute on a special night for Sam. Texas and Georgia made the short trip from their hotels without any issues. The 2019 Sugar Bowl is good to go. The Longhorns and Bulldogs are in the Superdome. Tonight, it's the 85th edition of the Sugar Bowl. The Sugar Bowl name derived from the 1920s when Louisiana was a major cultivator of sugar. To take that one step further, Etienne de Boer had a plantation here in 1795, and he was the first to crystallize sugar. It's an amazing, amazing thing what you can find out and what you learn in New Orleans the more you know. Welcome inside a spoonful of sugar. Texas certainly hoping the medicine goes down the right way and in a most delightful way tonight against Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. One year ago, the Longhorns entered the Texas Bowl 6-6 six and six without many of their best players because of suspension or injury or the NFL draft turned into the best thing that could have happened. Texas dominated Missouri, and it was a huge lift into the offseason. A win over Georgia tonight would provide an even bigger boost. If you're measuring the trajectory of our program, the answer is yes. I mean, this is, this is another very important step. Uh, winning it would, would certainly be even bigger. This is an elite game. This is an elite team. Um, and I think winning this game would put us in a position um, to understand that next year we, we have the ability to do whatever we want to do as long as we continue to play and work, work every day. The odds makers make Texas one of only four double-digit underdogs in 38 bowl games this season, and no one on the planet loves that role more than Tom Herman. Herman's team's 13-2-1 against the spread as head coach with 10 outright wins as a double-digit underdog, 5-0. Texas listed anywhere from an 11.5 to 13.5 point underdog tonight. Now, maybe the biggest challenge facing the Longhorns tonight, matching the physical play of this Georgia team. The Longhorns credit their rebirth on the national scene due to their own physical style of play. They're a little different than most Big 12 teams that you'll see. Tonight, though, a much different beast facing this Georgia Bulldogs team. It's football that was brought up when, before they started like, having all these rules and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's ball, bro. It's, it's uh, strap it up, get in the stands, buy down your mouthpiece, and let's go get it. This is just an awesome challenge for Texas tonight. Simply awesome. They're going to find out what they're really made of against a physical football team. Running the ball, stopping the run, getting to Jake Fromm, protecting Sam Ellinger. It's all in front of them tonight. Games like this is what I love, man. Like, I get fired up. And uh, there's nobody soft on this team. And, uh, like, we push that in the program. We're always working on keeping the culture, the culture of, of being blue-collar, of working extremely hard of of being hard nosed and physical and uh you know continuously get better at that but also you know, it's allowed it to show up on the field yeah and speaking of physicality texas needs to get its playmakers involved on offense early and lil jordan humphrey and colin johnson need to show georgia what they can do with that ridiculous size i asked offensive coordinator tim beck this week how vital it is that those two get the ball early and often they're, they're gonna they're gonna do a really good job of trying to take away your best players. I mean, we're gonna have to be able to get the ball to our playmakers. And they're gonna have to make plays. When we get those opportunities, there may be five, there may be ten. Through the course of the game, we got to make those plays. Now, Texas last played in the Sugar Bowl back in 1995, and it was played on December 31st, one of only five times they've played that game on December 31st. CBS Austin's Jeff Barker joins us now, and Jeff. That wasn't the only oddity that night. Bob, during that 1995 trip, uh, Bourbon Street in New Orleans' is many uh, fun offerings were far from the main distractions. Ron McKelvey, a junior <laughs> defensive back, was wrapping up his junior season until the Longhorns realized there was nothing really junior about him. 
Taji Allen will never forget his Sugar Bowl roommate. He wakes me up at, you know, two or three in the morning and said, hey, I'm, I got to get out of here. I'm leaving. You know, he says, man, I, you know, it's great playing with you guys. I, you know, they're going to come looking for me. I'm like, who's coming to look for you? For one season, under the name Ron McKelvey, Ron Weaver pulled off an all-timer. And then all of a sudden, you find out Ron McKelvey ain't Ron McKelvey. It started to feel like you were in a movie or something like that. You know, this actually happened to one of the most storied programs. A former Division II player in California, Weaver used an acquaintance's social security number and identity to extend his college playing days. Then hours before the Sugar Bowl, Texas's 30-year-old roster imposter was exposed. Weaver was supposed to be in New Orleans for Sunday night Sugar Bowl, but he skipped the Big Easy when his hometown newspaper reported the fake. So Coach Mack tonight saying, are you, is your name really James Brown? Are you really James Brown? Texas lost to Virginia Tech 28 to 10, and for many, the epic distraction is what they'll remember most. We had to get up at five in the morning that morning and discuss like what can happen to us. Are we gonna be getting put on probation? Will this game count? <laughs> All those things was going on in our head at the same time finding out this guy ain't who he is. But for most Texas players, there's memories of a good teammate. And in hindsight, one they knew was a tad different. Not a lot of college students walk around in slippers and, 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 and a house robe drinking coffee. <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning, it's Ron brewing coffee. He had his coffee maker, and he'd be down there reading the newspaper. There were rumors about Weaver's motivation, perhaps a tell-all book about Texas football, but nothing was ever published. More than 20 years later, it's a story about someone who didn't want the dream to end, even if that meant going 10 steps too far. I really can't say that I blame him. I mean, he somehow fell through the cracks, <laughs> broke a couple of federal laws, and, and you know, just kind of did what he had to do to get back in the scene again and play football. And you know, what, what, what happened to him? He didn't, he didn't get in trouble, he didn't really go to jail. I mean, nothing really happened. Everybody just kind of saw it as a, man, guy really loved football. Still unbelievable that that could happen even 23 years later. Mike Adams, who you just heard from, former wide receiver, told us that Bryant Westbrook is the last 95 Longhorn that he knows of to run into McKelvey. The Houston Chronicle also reported a couple years ago McKelvey was last known to be working in the restaurant business out on the West Coast. It is still the most bizarre of all the bizarre. Great reporting on that. That was fantastic. Good catching up with all those former Longhorns. All right, back in 2001, New Orleans renamed its airport the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport. Quite a change in name, certainly, honoring the jazz musician from New Orleans, Louis Armstrong. But if you look at some of Louis's work, it seems like he almost preferred the, preferred the word Louis and not Louis. As we came to find out, Crescent City pronunciations are just difficult. So we had Craig Way help us out. He gets, gets us going and articulates all these words the correct way. Teacher, okay. So let's see what happens. All right. I just want you to go in order. Chupatulas. Chupatulas. Okay. Chapatulas. Laganape. Lagnape. Lagnape. Okay. Lanyap. Yeah. What's the next one? Piro. Piro. That's. A, they say it Piro here. Yeah, but we're Polish too. Pierogi. <laughs> Pierogi. Okay. Not the country. Piro. Praline. Praline, I got that one. Or no, you didn't, but yeah. Go ahead. No, I got that one. I'm from Texas, baby. In French, pralines. All right. Praline. Flambeau. 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 That's good. Flambeau. And then finally. Laissez <laughs> les bons. That means look at bons. Laissez les bons temps rouler. Which means? Let the good times roll. There you go. I love it. It's indescribable uh, how rewarding it is. Tom Herman showed strong emotion yesterday when talking about his seniors, how they shaped the future of Texas football later in the show. Up next, though, Georgia or Oklahoma, who Herman thinks is better after watching the film. First, though, tonight's spoonful of sugar stumper. Name the three stadiums at which the Sugar Bowl was held. We've got that answer later in the show. But first, CBS Austin takes you on a taste of New Orleans. Going in. I got him. We're ready to go. Let's fry him. Two minute drop. Oh, there it is. I'm so much sugar. <laughs> That's a beignet. That's excellent. 
Now tonight's game is Texas seventh uh, this season against a ranked opponent. The Longhorns four and two in those first six matchups. Two of those matchups came against top ten teams. Of course, it was the same team in Oklahoma. Now the Longhorns record, the four and two uh, mark this year in those games, does show the development and the progress this program is making. So now that Tom Herman's watched a month of video in preparation for Georgia, I ask him if this is the best team Texas will play this year. Our rival to our north is pretty dang good, too, and um, uh, we respect the heck out of them. It's, it's hard to say best, and uh, I, I would say certainly different. They pose some unique challenges. They're, they're certainly you know, as good as, as any team that we played in our two years here. That's on our uh, A-Ling. Sam A-Ling. He said there's no R. Not done trying to figure out those names. Now that the New Orleans sayings are out of the way, can the same people figure out the Texas Longhorn football players' names? Plus, of all the awesome things that happened in the Bayou City this week, nothing tops Texas tight end Andrew Beck's visit to the hospital, his sign that went viral. But first, another CBS Austin taste of New Orleans. Beignets are going to be a big draw here, and that, that's why we wanted to create the segment. Breakfast is an important meal. There's no such thing as <laughs> diet while you're in New Orleans. Chris Nelson belly rub for the beignets. How awesome are these? Good stuff. The world famous Cafe Du Monde. Obviously, you have to go there if you're going to go anywhere for beignets. On a visit to see children at a hospital this week, Texas tight end Andrew Beck delivered presents, but was the only one able to talk to the family he was visiting. Their conversation via sign language went viral on Twitter, garnering 2 million views. And uh, this is awesome retweet from JJ Watt. I saw that one. My mom sent that to me. She's more excited about that than anybody else. That was cool. Hopefully that, that spreads a little bit more interest in, in the deaf community, raises a little bit of awareness for, for the things that they go through. I mean, like I said, there was nobody else in the hospital that they really got to talk to except for a couple other people. Andrew is just awesome. The quarterbacks in this game are too, both with a lot of football left to play. Sophomore Sam Ellinger of Texas and Jake Fromm of Georgia played brilliant football this year. The two first met at the Elite 11 camp in 2016. I joked with Fromm this week, Sam seeks out linebackers. Fromm wasn't quite of the same mindset. <laughs> no, uh, um, I know for sure in my conference, it's probably not a good idea when you do that. So uh, I've, I've definitely tried to avoid that and um, you know, throw a couple more balls downfield. Very good friends with Jake. Um, we, we've texted a few times since we've been here. He's a really great dude. Everyone that I've talked to loves being around him. Um, he's, he's a really easy guy to like. I think that we love talking the game and we've just we've seen each other a lot and been to a lot of similar camps. Sam is doing all he can to drag Texas back into the national spotlight. Jeff Barker returns. And, Jeff, there's another group on this Texas team that really has a passion for doing the same thing. From Chris Nelson's belly rubs <laughs> to Brecken Hager's hair and the Austin sound bites, it's been an entertaining up-and-down ride for this group of Texas seniors. And yesterday at his press conference, Tom Herman said that this group could go down as the most influential class of his tenure. The Sugar Bowl is a reward for a good season. And for these Texas seniors, the end of a roller coaster college career. It's indescribable uh, how rewarding it is. Just being back, you know, to a New Year's Six Bowl means everything to the team. It's a class that started with a pair of five and seven seasons and a coaching change. All week long, they sat around reminiscing and wondering how they'll be remembered by Texas faithful. We talked about it. We had our senior banquet about a week ago. Just kind of where this university was when we got here and kind of where it's it's come now i mean kind of seeing that and, and rebuilding it to get it back here has been a lot of fun and i've loved every minute of it with these guys not seeing results not seeing results and and this year you'd like finally see it all open up and just leaving it here and for the guys behind making sure they don't have to go through that for many of these seniors the opportunity to bring the texas program back was a major factor in their recruitment they just thought that goal might have been achieved a little bit sooner than this but perhaps even more important than just their decision to go to Texas was their decision to commit to Tom Herman's staff when they first arrived in Austin. They certainly could have, you know, been defiant uh, or disinterested when we got here, but uh, they bought in. I can't thank them enough uh, or be more proud of them. Buy-in is a college football cliche, but really without it, there's no success. For Charles Aminihu, who came back this season instead of going to the NFL, there's one goal left to check off. To get to a bowl game like this has definitely been a good feeling, and like uh, like you, you look back and be like, okay, yeah, we, we we accomplished something. Winning that game would be like, okay, yeah, I really did accomplish something here. 
and uh, I left a legacy. Win or lose against Georgia, one thing's for sure. These seniors left the program in a better place than they found it. With the Longhorns in New Orleans, Jeff Barker, CBS Austin Sports. Well, if they can go out with a win today, Bob, that would mean that this group of seniors brought Texas its first 10 win season and New Year's Six Bowl victory since 2009. Quite a run for them. They were <laughs> vital to the buy-in. It's incredible to see what they've done for this Texas program. Absolutely. All right, how about a couple Georgia freshmen? Vince Dooley's grandson is on this Georgia football team. JT Dooley is a redshirt freshman wide receiver despite his Texas roots. Dooley went to high school at Highland Park in Dallas. He joined freshman wide receiver Tommy Bush, who went to Shirts Clemens, just outside the San Antonio area, to make up two-thirds of the Texans on the roster. There is one more, though, and he's going to be a big part of tonight's game. The third, J.R. Reed. Reed is a Frisco native that tore his ACL his senior year of high school. Tulsa and SMU, the only schools that recruited him. And after a year with the Golden Hurricane, Reed did something many college players can't do. He moved up, transferring from Tulsa to Georgia. I just believed in myself, first off, and really betted on myself and knew I had the talent. And that's why I wanted to leave, because I felt like I could play in bigger talent, which I can. I proved that I, sh that I can do that. Earlier, you heard people with a really rough rendition of some of those New Orleans pronunciations. Now it's time to see if they can pronounce any of the Texas Longhorns players' names any better. I just want pronunciations. Okay. Ooh. Ryan Buschewski. Ryan Bugaszewski. Ryan Buchevsky. Nailed it. The punter, Ryan Buschewski. Sam Ellinger. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd say it too. Ailing. Yeah. Sam Ellinger. I knew that one. Ellinger. Sam Ailing. Because there's no R. Quarterback, Sam Ellinger. Charles Enenemhu. Charles Umanahu. Charles Omenahu. Well Charles Omenahu. I was the smartest people you ever met in New Orleans. <laughs> the defensive end, Charles Omenahu. I'd, I'd says. Adoyo Adoy. Ayala Adeyo. Sesois. At Sesois. <laughs> the linebacker, Ayadeli Adeaway. Oh, God. Well, Miles. Miles. You got Miles. <laughs> Miles Anwabu. Anyagule. Pretty good. Let me try again. And Miles Olabuke. <laughs> <laughs> Anu. Enigbul. And the former wide receiver and kick returner, Miles Onyebule. That was, I mean, we were close on a few of those. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Ayadeli a day away, a freshman on this Texas team. That'll be a fun one to pronounce in years to come. Stay with us. We're going to answer the stumper next. But first, another CBS Austin Taste of New Orleans. The owner of this fine establishment told us that food critic Alton Brown said this was his favorite beignet in yeah. the city of New Orleans. That's a big test. Uh, yeah, We've got some good ones. It is. I can see why. It was very good. Crunchy on the outside, a little gooey and warm on the inside, sugary on top like it should be. But I think the ones yesterday, because we made them. We made them. They were, they were CBS Austin handmade. Yeah. So I, I'm going to have to go with those. All right, let's answer the spoonful of sugar stumper. Name the three stadiums at which the Sugar Bowl was held. The answer, Tulane Stadium from 1934 to 1974 here in the Superdome every other year, but one, 2006, when they moved it to the Georgia Dome after Hurricane Katrina. Our final predictions, next. 52 minutes from kickoff, some final thoughts and predictions. Go ahead, Jeffrey. I'm going to say Georgia 31-17. to I think however this game plays out, Georgia is balanced enough whether it's in the run game or in the pass game with Fromm, I think they're balanced enough to beat Texas in this one. The Longhorns compete a little, little too early to the party. Though, I'm not going to make a prediction on the score. I'm just going to say this. It will be a game in the fourth quarter. Texas is ready to play this game. They want to prove their physical. They want to have a springboard into what they think is going to be a real, real good future of the program. That's it for a spoonful of sugar for Jeffrey and Anthony. I'm Bob Ballou. Enjoy the game tonight, everyone. <laughs>